Okay, so I don't really understand, Francesco, why anyone would want to study maths at university. It's just really boring, all the numbers, all the equations, and I mean, what is there to learn that you haven't already learned in school, right? Not all math is numbers. Okay. And, <laughs> yeah, you don't look convinced. <laughs> And also, it is not true that we learn all math at school. A lot of mathematics has been discovered just recently and a lot of mathematics is yet to be discovered. Okay, but you're only going to need to use that kind of maths if you're working as a maths teacher or a maths researcher. Well, that's not true. Actually, you encounter math in your everyday life many times. It's just that you do not realize that that is math. Also, math is essential to many different jobs. I'm going to take you with me and introduce some friends. They all studied math, so come with me and let's ask them how they use math. All right. You might be surprised. <laughs> how is math linked to video games? I wanted Hannah to meet my friend Richard, a video game programmer. Using mathematics, he develops games played all over the world. He also has a puzzle for us, which is related to his job. Before I went to university to study physics, I, as I was told by my careers advisor, because I was interested in astronomy, but I didn't really understand that that would involve maths. And he said, well, not only will you need to do a GCSE in maths, you'll have to do an additional GCSE in maths. And because you do that, you'll have to do your maths GCSE in half the time to make space for it. So I was, thought this is absolutely terrible because my maths scores were really bad at the time. I thought, I can't do maths, I'm not good at maths. But because I really wanted to do astronomy, I went and I really kind of did some soul searching and decided I'm going to take the challenge. And I worked really, really hard. It was really difficult, but I managed to get an A. And I started to realize that I actually did quite enjoy maths in the end. How you use math in your job as a game programmer? One of the pieces of maths that we use every day is geometry. Because if, if you think about the 3D world in a computer game, mm -hmm. that has to be stored in the computer and just numbers, just reams and reams of numbers. Mm -hmm. And like that could be everything from like the, the, the leaves, the position of leaves on a tree, the colour of a player's eyes, mm -hmm. to the position of objects that are moving. And if you had, say, two boxes rolling down a hill and um, you move them based on the numbers you have to update where their positions are in the world but then how do you know if two boxes have collided if they're if you're just looking at reams and reams of numbers that's where maths comes in okay here's a here's a puzzle for you imagine that you've got a museum or somewhere where there's some um, expensive artifact and you want to put up some cameras to make sure that the that the artifact is always being looked at by a camera. Now the camera can sit in a corner and it can turn 360 degrees but obviously it can't see through walls so if there's any nooks and crannies you're going to have to add another camera to see into that. The question is what's the lowest number of cameras that you absolutely need to cover the whole room at any time? Okay, it depends on the shape, right? Well let's, let's start with um, a really simple example. Imagine the room is just a triangle how many cameras would you need to cover the entire room? You just need one because there's no corners for it to see around. Exactly, yeah. The camera can sit in a corner, it can turn and it can see everything in the room. Now, what about this L shape? Okay, so for an L shape, you could have one camera in the top left corner of the L and then another one in the bottom right corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that way they could see everything. That would definitely see everything in the room, but there's a way you could have less cameras in this particular room. Can you see that? Ah, okay, if you had one sitting on the very bottom left corner, then that could turn and see everything. Yeah, exactly, yeah. So in that case, we could do it with just one camera. Um, let's look at a more complicated example. So what about these three shapes? This H shape, this funny one like a comb, and this much more complicated shape here. Now it is your turn. Try and solve the puzzle for each of these three shapes. Remember the rules. You can only place cameras on corners and cameras are really expensive. So try and use as few cameras as possible. After you have solved the puzzle for all of these shapes, you can draw your own and challenge your classmates. However, only draw shapes which are only made of straight lines.